Hello and welcome to today's class. For this class, we consider the concept of trigonometry, right? We're looking at the concept of inverse trigonometric functions. So, before we proceed to this, um, we have created a playlist or a full tutorial course on the concept of trigonometry. So, if you're interested in learning trigonometry from crash, um, you can simply um, click on the link you see above you here or perhaps you can also check our playlist you see the uh, full tutorial course um reading from the first very first crash video you need to watch before um the other right so last class we look into the concept of quadrant of angle right let's now look into the concept of inverse trigonometric function for inverse trigonometric function the idea is quite simple right so the idea is that whenever you're taking any trigonometric identity, whenever I have taken any trigonometric identity to the other side, it becomes an inverse. What do I mean? Look up. Let's say I have, let's have, I have case 3, for case 1, case 3. For my case 1, let's use sine. Let's say I have sine um, theta 1 to be equal to A, and I have cos theta 2 to be equal to b and also i have tan theta 3 to be equal to uh, c similarly it also applies to the inverse symmetric functions too right like sec cosec and um tangent cotan right it applies the same but look up please for this one here look up please for this one here let's take the inverse the idea of inverse is that I'm looking for tan 1, tan 2, and tan 3. There's no way I can look for tan, tan eh, sorry, I can look for theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 without taking this um, trick function to the other side. And the next line is that for theta 1, theta 1, theta 1 is equal to this sign here will come to that side, becomes sine inverse of A. So note that when a trick function like sine um, cosine um, tan cos they are crossing the other side because what an inverse so I have this one theta 2 theta 2 is equal to that is cos here becomes a cos inverse of B finally take tan here that's theta 3 is equal to the tan inverse of C this becomes how to find the um, inverse of trigonometric functions, right? As you can see. Aside this, note that when it comes to inverse trigonometric function, it also has its own quadrant, right? Initially, when I did quadrants, we draw a graph that is where first quadrant, third quadrant, third and fourth quadrant, right? So similarly, this one has its own quadrant too, right? So let me the first our, our, our very first class on quadrant. When we did our, our diagram, we have something of this nature. We said for the quadrant concept, this becomes 180 minus theta. We said here too is what? 180 minus theta. But we said here is what? Um, theta minus, minus 180. And we said here is what? 360 minus theta from our very first class of quadrant. But for inverse, the idea changes. The idea is that this one here becomes a plus. That's the only difference between the normal quadrant and the inverse trigonometric quadrant that's the only difference there right so let's draw the diagram um, for representing the quadrant of an inverse trigonometric function my quadrant goes below as you can see i have this right so we said first quadrant sine cos and tan are positive right in our last class we said that so my sine theta is positive my cos theta positive and tan theta is what the positive. We said this last class, right? We said for this one here, yeah, only sign is positive. So we use the concept of we use the concept of all student taste coffee, right? It means that all means everything is positive. Student means only signs positive. Why the rest are what negative? So cos theta 
is negative with the second quadrant. This is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and what there? This is third quadrant, and this is my fourth quadrant, right? We said at this point here, tan 2 is negative, tan theta is negative. For this one, we said tan is positive, or tan is always positive here. Yeah? So sine, sorry, from here now, sine is negative, cos negative, but tan is what? Positive at the third quadrant. Uh, for my fourth quadrant here, yeah? only cos is positive. So sine is negative. Tan cos is negative, sorry, cos positive, and y tan is what? Negative. So I have this one here, right? We established this in our last class. So we said um, the idea of this quadrant remains the same. That becomes 180 minus theta. This becomes 180 minus theta. This one becomes theta plus three, uh, 180, sorry. 180 y becomes 360 minus theta. Observe the difference between our normal initial quadrant and the um, inverse metric quadrant. The idea is that for the third quadrant, they are different. This one is negative, what this one is what is positive. This becomes the idea here. And we said when angles fall between 90, fall between 0 and 90, you apply first quadrant. When the angle fall between 91 to 180, apply second quadrant. 181 to 270, third quadrant. Y to 71 to 360, that's your fourth quadrant. We said this in the last class, right? So let's now use this idea of inverse model functions we have learned to solve some problems. And let's see what we get. Welcome back. Let's try to use all these concepts we have learned to solve this particular problem, as you can see. To solve this problem here yeah, is a quite easy tax. How do you solve this particular problem? Under the concept of inverse function functions. The one says, find the value of theta for which theta, um, is zero degree less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 360 degree, right? It means that my value should be in between zero to what? 360 degree, my angle, right? As my answer, should be in between zero to what? 360 degree. So it means that I, I can, I'm considering everything um, in the quadrant, right? That's the concept. How do you solve this problem here? Yeah? Let's number one there, solution. For number one there, I have that A, I have sine theta is equal to 0 0.5. We said find the value of theta, that's the concept. How do I get theta? Yeah, I'll apply this concept to get theta, right, for sine. So I'll have that theta is equal to, take sine here, becomes sine inverse of 0 0.5. If I punch my calculator, this is equal to, if I punch my calculator, what do I get as my sine inverse of, you press the shift then, your sine becomes sine inverse of 0 0.5, I have 30, so my answer becomes 30 degrees. Now look up please, I've gotten my, uh, what's it called? I've gotten my theta has been equal to 30 degrees. What's now the concept? Ask yourself that this angle I got my the positive angle, Abby. I have a positive angle, right? Ask yourself that in the in this quadrant, right? Where is sine positive? Listen up. I have a positive angle. It means that sine is what positive. Now ask yourself in this quadrant, where is sine positive? Sine sine is positive in two in two quadrants. The first quadrant and what second quadrant. But majorly. You are ignoring the first quadrant because all are positive. So, in the, when it comes to the concept of inverse value function, we are not considering what the first quadrant at all. We are, we are focusing majorly on what second 
third and fourth quadrant. Right? So I've gotten theta as 30 degree. Ask yourself now, where is, where is theta? Sorry, where is sine positive? Listen up. My angle is 30 degree, a, a positive 30 degree. It means that sine positive. Now, where is sine positive in this question, in this quadrant? Sine is positive by what? My second quadrant. So it means that I can also get on that value for theta. So, um, therefore, listen up. Listen up. In this question here, I have one theta, right? I might say find theta B. I want my theta at 30 degrees. No problem. This 30 degrees is a positive angle, positive angle Abi. So it means that sine is positive. That's the meaning. So you now come back to the quadrant. Where is sine positive here? At the second quadrant. So what's the angle there? One minus theta. So it means that under if I want to get this, let's say this is theta one. So to get it theta two now, it becomes what? 180 minus theta. What theta here? That's 30. Subtract theta two becomes subtract 180 from 30. I'll have 150 as my other angle, right? So it means that it means that for a particular question, you can have many angles. So for this sine theta, we got to 0 0.5. I have two answers, two angles there, 30 degrees and what? 150 degrees. That's the concept. So the idea is that when, any answer you get as your angle, tell yourself that this angle is positive, Abby. It means sine positive. Which quadrant has sine as positive value? This second quadrant. So you pick out this angle and then use this way. You have this one. That's solve problem one. Let's do problem two. Example two there, that's B. I have that cos theta is equal to 0 0.2164. How do I get theta? We said for me, a theta is equal to A cos C becomes a cos inverse of 0 0.2164. At this point here, what do I do? I'll put my calculator, shift cos becomes cos inverse 0 0.2164. I have about theta is equal to 77.5. Uh, degrees as my theta. So it means that theta is positive. My angle now is positive, Abby. So it means that cos is positive. That's the meaning. Now, check your quadrant. We said we are, we are ignoring the first quadrant because they are all positive. You are, when it comes to inverse function, function, we are not considering the first quadrant at all. So it means that theta now is positive. It means cos is positive. Check your quadrant. Where is cos positive? Cos is positive at, at what? At my first quadrant. What's the angle there? This is my angle here. So it means that this is my theta 1. Theta 2 will be equal to um, 360 minus theta. What's theta there? That's 77.5. Theta 2 is equal to uh, 360 minus um, I will have about 282.4 degrees. So, in this one too, I have two angles there. Theta 1 and theta 2. Theta 1 is my initial angle. Theta 2 is when I consider my quadrant. I have this one here. Let's do example um, 3 here. Let's do um, C. Let's do C. Let's do C. From here, let's do um, C. For C, I have that tan theta is equal to a negative um, 1.271. Listen up, please. Listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up. From here, let's get theta. Theta is equal to the tan inverse of negative 1.271. So when it comes to polish calculator, you don't press tan inverse minus, just press tan inverse that number. Then you leave your answer in negative form, right? So if I press shift tan, then 1.271, so I have about theta is equal to 
right? So it become a negative angle, a negative angle, please. This negative sign comes here, degrees. So it's not proper for my angle to be negative, but it's just showing direction, right? So theta is equal to what? Negative 51.8 degrees. So it means that my angle is 51.8 degrees. But because I have a negative sign from the beginning, I have it here. So my original theta, my theta is what? 51.8 degrees. Now it means that since my angle is negative, it means that tan is negative. So now check your quadrant. Where is tan negative? Tan is negative as at where? At two cases. At second quadrant and what? Fourth quadrant. So it means that I'll be having what? Three angles. I'll have theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. Why? Because tan is negative at two quadrants. Second quadrant and what? Fourth quadrant. So let's say this is my theta 1. So theta 1 is equal to what? 51.8. We know that it's negative, but my angle is not, angles are not always negative. So, this is my original angle, star 1. Let's get it at 2. Tan is negative in second quadrant. So, what's my second quadrant? I have 180 minus theta. becomes 180 minus... What's my theta? That's 51.8. Theta 2 is equal to 180 minus 51.8. I have about 1, 2... 8.1 degrees, or perhaps approximately 0.2 degrees. We want to. This is my theta 2. For my theta 3, tan is also negative at third, third, fourth quadrant. So theta 3, theta 3 becomes, what's the angle there? 360 minus theta. I have 360 minus theta. What's theta? Theta is um, 51.8. So theta 3 is equal to 360 minus 51.8. I have about 308.2 degrees as my answer. So for this one now, I have a negative. For this angle here, I have thick angles. Theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. These are to solve this problem. So you do um, D and E and leave your answer in the comment section below. Or perhaps you can reach out by sending me a WhatsApp message to my WhatsApp number, right, and give me the answer. I will reply you as fast as I can. So see you in the next class. Do well to watch our video, share this video to your friends and classmates so they can learn too.